All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I need to do my talk in half an hour, which is good for me, but it's bad for you to follow up. But, 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 but really what I thought, this probably would be a good time to open up the discussion also. So well, let's just have an interaction while I do my, my talk. And the first thing I, I just want to ask is, by show of hand, how many are currently doing RNAi at the uh, screening level that Serena and Caroline described? Okay. And how many are doing assay development gene by gene? Okay. All right. Good. So I'll talk a little bit about our library and uh, really confess that I was the accidental RNAi at... Uh, Sloan Kettering. Uh, before I went there, Sloan Kettering had a, a really nice collaboration with, uh, with Amersham Biosciences before it was acquired by GE Healthcare. And part of that deal was to make an RNAi library. So we have our own internal Sloan Kettering RNAi library that results as a joint partnership with GE. And that's the one we started working with uh, back in 2003. It was a great library if you close your eyes and forget all the bad things that were said about RNAi, namely off-target effects and viability issues, okay? If, if that's not what you're interested in, this library was perfect. Uh, if off-target effects and trying to understand pathway analysis that your main interest, this library was problematic for us. This is before the folks came out with off-target effects, seeding sequence 3 prime UTR. Uh, we were really in the, in the early days, and the advantage it gave us is a strong bioinformatic position to go and acquire other libraries. So it took me about almost three and a half years to get the okay from management to go and buy another sRNA library from Ambion. So we looked at the different vendors, and my job here is not to tell you which, is, which vendor is better than other, but for our purposes and based on the data we had internally. So we run several sRNA screens using our own library, and about 99% of the hits were of target effects. The one thing we learned, we learned an enrichment in three prime UTR regions. So we have a pretty good idea of what they look like. We still don't know what their targets, but probably by the end of this year, early next year, we will know. But we found that most of our library was enriched in some interesting three prime UTR regions. And when you go and look for the sequencing that people do and talk to them, those are prevalently dominant across various genomes, particularly cancer genomes. The uh, SHRNA business was a whole different topic. I mean, SRNA started, everybody got hooked up, everybody was excited. Uh, SHRNA started, Ronnie Bernards and those guys, and everybody got hooked up, but no one could figure out what the hell they were doing but they kept getting very interesting papers that, in our opinion, were written backwards. They found something, and they wrote it based on what you found. If you try to use a systematic methodology, it's very hard to figure out that that thing is an efficient system. Uh, about last year, we had a, a survey done at uh, Sloan Kering, Okay, So we have over 200 investigators faculty, and we have probably two, three hundred MDs in the hospital. And my survey had a bunch of questions, and one question was, would you prefer to do arrays versus pools? And if you prefer pools, what's the reasoning? If you prefer arrays, what's the actual reasoning? I was really expecting that the vast majority will say pool, because that's quick and dirty, and then you'll find out. Most of the investigators didn't really believe the pool data because of frequencies of distributions for SH, random integration. You can't control one sRNA per cell. That's almost impossible, okay? So we, we opted to go with Sigma to make uh, the TRC, the TRC1. That's what we acquired. covers 16,000 genes. And we paid Sigma to make the lentiviral for us at the, at the titer that we want, uh, about 10 to the 8 with a cross-uniformity across a plate. If tighter uniformity is not across the plate, it's a huge problem for you. For short-term assays, it's a big problem, okay? And we did it arrayed. And the consensus I got from my uh, survey was 
very sarcastic comments like, we know exactly how many Gs there are. So why the hell do we go and pull them all together? Because we know how many there are. They're a limited number. If we were in the days where the sequencing of the genome was not completed, perhaps we'll say pulled will be the way forward. Okay? That's number one. Number two, everyone who run RNAi screens, including Carlin, we all were hit by all the rubbish that was in uh, the NCBI database and RefSec. Okay? When we run our algorithms that were run in 2000, 2001, 2002 against the RefSecs then and the NCBI then, 99% of our sRNAs were specific. If we run them in 2009, you'd be very surprised what else they hit. Okay? Why? Because of duplication, uh, some open reading frames that were missing one nucleotide, so there is a shift. So we had to deal with all those problems to really curate and keep an update of, 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 of RepSec. I have one person in my lab dedicated to maintaining RepSec updates. That then each time an update happened, he needs to run all the algorithms against our database. And we typically flag everything that it's not supposed to be. Okay. All right. So, based on this, 